snake number four of Serpent Center's top 10 countdown, which is my favorite, the eyelash viper. Coming up. Bangs in your face. Subscribe now. What's up, Venom Squad? Hey, as promised, snake number four on our top ten snakes of the Serpent Center, of course, is the Eyelash Viper. To pick our favorite snake is very difficult because we love them all and we work with all these animals on a daily basis and it's just really something hard to do for us. The next four snakes on our list, they're all kind of neck and neck. I mean, we love them all and it's hard for me to pick a favorite, but the eyelash vipers are definitely Miss Dina's favorite. I mean, she she's she's hands on with the eyelash vipers. She, she takes care of all the babies and does a lot of stuff with the eyelash vipers. So that's Dina's snake, <laughs> okay? And they are probably one of my all-time favorite snakes in the world. I love my little schlegs. We actually breed a lot of them. It's it, it's one of our signature animals that we really strive to produce and just make the best of. It's the only snake that I kind of consider our hobby snake. <laughs> and I mean, they're so fun to keep and, and they're literally so variable. Look at the colors of these things. They're just amazing. Look at this yellow tiger one. That's, and, and these are all females, okay? Females tend to get bigger. The little eyelash vipers are extraordinary. I mean, that's a little yellow tiger female. And of course, there's one of our red females. And then we kind of got a Christmas tree phase, green female. But now with eyelash vipers, they're definitely sexually dimorphic. Males are much smaller than females. I chose to put out females so you can see them in the camera because <laughs> males are just little squirts, you know? But females get big, big head. And these three actually kind of are behaving. I've got a bunch more of adults and I can't place too many out here because they'll bite each other. They're ornery little suckers, okay? They're always gaping and, <laughs> and striking. But as, as a whole, eyelash vipers, they are definitely a venomous snake, okay? They're not to be taken lightly. I mean, bites happen and they're really not that severe, but there has been recorded deaths from the Bothraki Shalegliai. And antivenom is effective if it's the right antivenom. And what we're finding out here lately from some recent studies that are being conducted on just Schleg bites, okay? The animals from, from well, they actually range from Southern Mexico all the way down into the Northern parts of South America. But some of the animals from the Northern parts of South America they're finding out that these little suckers have kind of a different component to their venom. They're actually a little bit different from animals from other ranges. And they've been using like a Bothraki's antivenom and they're discovering that using the Bothrops antivenom, a polyvalent that covers all the Bothrops, is actually working better. And let me tell you what's interesting is we're finding out that the baby's venom is actually a different component and enzymes compared to the adult venom. And we think that's all got to do with prey items. As babies, these little guys are feeding on, you know, they're feeding on amphibians and small reptilian fare. And as adults, they're moving up the scale and they're eating bats and birds and rodents and they're changing over to warm-blooded prey. So we think that that's got something to do with that ontogenic change that the schlegs are going through. But I know a few people that's been bitten by schlegs and I know a gal that got bit on an index finger by a baby. She was feeding a baby. And finger swelled up. She said it got really itchy and it was irritating for a couple of hours. She goes, it was nothing more than a bee sting. But I also know another person that got bit by an adult schleg and it was serious. I mean, they had to get antivenom, swelling, painful. It's a highly hemolytic venom, okay? It's, it's working on your bloodstream. But what it does is it attacks the platelets in your blood and it causes it to not coagulate. So you kind of just keep bleeding. So as a hobby snake, it's a great hobby snake for the advanced keeper, for an experienced keeper. But they're definitely not something that you take lightly. 
and it's something that you treat with respect. And as fun as they are, and me and Dina love them, and, and we we breed these things and we offer them to other facilities. Um, it's, it's a pleasure. It's really fun to work with the Schlags because you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> I mean, you may get babies of every different color under the rainbow. You get red ones, yellow ones, green ones. I've got some, I mean, we'd have black ones born here. I mean, we, we get just an array of colors and you never know what you're going to get. They're like a box of Skittles, okay? <laughs> but the Bothrop Shalaglia, what a cool little snake. And it is definitely on our top four. For Dina, it's number one, huh, baby? Yes. yes. <laughs> and Dina's gotten pretty skilled at breeding and raising babies. You know, and with the Island Spiper being one of the, probably one of the most widely distributed arboreals in the, in the damn Bothrakis, um, you know, a lot of bites do happen that are caused by these little boogers, okay? I mean, coffee plants, they're like attracted to coffee plants, and a lot of the workers end up getting bit by a schlag. And a lot of times the bites are, um, of course, they, they, they're, they're on the mild side, but they can be serious depending on where you've been bit. A lot of bites that are on extremities tend to be, you know, treated and okay, but if they're, it's, it's weird because I was reading this article, and a lot of people get bit on the face or on the neck, and, and it's because they're working eye level on something, and these little suckers are, are boiled, so they're up off the ground a few feet, and people accidentally get bit in the face or in the neck area. I read an article where um, a young lady was bitten on the tongue, working at a coffee plant, and, and, and she passed away. Very sad story. I mean, I read it, I was like, wow, it's, it's horrible. But because the level of care in some countries isn't quick enough to respond to a snake bite, you know, that's why the World Health Organization has deemed, you know, snake bite, snake bite, one of the leading tropical diseases. I mean, but I'll tell you, in Costa Rica, with Claudio Picado, they are the forefront leading experts in any venom and, and all of this stuff and producing some of the best products for snake bite. I mean, that's where we get all of our any venom from. It's, and it's, I'll tell you, it's, it's, that institution is world renowned. But the Schlags, what a cool snake, you know. And I learn something new about these things every day. I really do. A buddy of mine, Scott, was telling me because, you know, when we produce babies, and we produce a bunch of them this last year, um, you know, I normally don't even try to sex them to tell male from female because they're so micro, they're so little. And I just, like, you know, it looks male, it looks female. I kind of like eyeball them. But, and I've been doing this a very long time. But you can always learn something new. My buddy Scott said, he says, I'm telling you, he goes, you can candle them. <laughs> I'm like, candle them? He'll hold a light behind them and you can damn near see through them and you can see hemipenes and, and put them in a clear plastic container, hold them up above your head and put a bright flashlight above them. He goes, and you can see through them and you can see hemipenes and, and he explained it to me. And I'm like, there ain't no damn way you can see through a schlag. You're gonna see through them. I mean, now I used to do this process with my little leucistic cobras when I was breeding monocles because they were damn near transparent as it was, right? But I tried it with the brand new baby Schlegs and lo and behold, I could see shadows where hemipenes are. I could see nothing where females are. I mean, and it works. And it just goes to show you, even a guy like me that's been doing this 40 years can always learn something new. But Scott, thanks for the tip, buddy. <laughs> the Bothrop Shalegliae, what a cool little snake, right? It's fitting that it's got to be in our top four here at the Serpent Center. Hey, I want to say a special thank you to the whole Venom Squad, but a big thank you to some of our generous donators and people that have just went above and beyond for us. I mean, we're, we're striving to get this done very soon. We want to have our exhibit room open by mid-January, and we're on our way. On our scale, we are at $7,200. I mean, imagine that. We are so overwhelmed and just blown away by the generosity of our followers and our friends. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's a big thing that we took on to open this Serpentarium, and we are so excited to open. But let me tell you, um, especially from the snake community, I mean, we have had such support it's unbelievable i mean um nathan over at southern exotics he's contributed to the serpent center um I, i'll tell you a buddy of mine scott sharp 
He's a big eyelash guy. He loves his eyelash wipers. Congratulations, Scott, on your first litter of eyelash form. And last but not least, I'll tell you, this one just came in last night, and it's a big one. I mean, my buddy, Aaron Gershon, from the Fork Tongue, we're going to put Aaron's stuff in there. I mean, you guys think I produce some cool eyelash wipers here at the Serpent Center? You got to see the stuff Aaron does. Aaron is an old school snake man like me, and he specializes in eyelash wipers, just like we do. But I'll tell you, Aaron produces some straight fire. The guy is so skilled, and he, I'm gonna tell you, he is the salt of the earth. Aaron's just one of them guys, once you talk to him, I mean, you immediately like him. He's just, he, he's just a very skilled and a very just dedicated man to his animals. He loves his eyelash wipers, and he just, he lives for them. And, if you got the privilege of ever being able to acquire a specimen from Aaron, count your lucky stars because you're getting the best. There is no two ways about it. I mean, I produce some really cool snakes, but Aaron produces just straight fire. Some really neat eyelash wipers. But Aaron, thank you so much. Aaron sponsored a whole exhibit build, a whole damn exhibit build, which is outstanding. Thank you so much, brother. So to get back to our top 10 in 10 days. Hey, <laughs> we're trying, okay? We are really trying and I'm worn out with all the work we're doing. We're, we're actually doing construction work here and on top of all of my snake work, okay? And then we're trying to shoot the videos, but our problem is the damn internet. I'm, we are pulling, if I had some hair left, I'd be pulling it out. I'm starting down here like this, all right? <laughs> but let me tell you guys, hey, um, we're doing well with our fundraiser, and thank you so much. But if you want to sponsor an exhibit bill, email us. If you want to sponsor a snake, email us. We'll give you all the particulars on it. If you want to buy a brick, $10 buys a brick, and your name will go on the wall of fame. It'll be at the Serpent Center forever. And we are trying to build this educational exhibit for everybody to come and enjoy and learn about animals, okay? and. Let me tell you, we are doing so well with it. We are just ecstatic. We really are. Thank you guys so much. But if you're new to the channel, hit that V-Logo thing and subscribe now. And come on back and check us out at the Serpent Center. This is Willie from Venom Central. We're checking out. Later. <laughs>